Hi Prodigy Campers, welcome to our session. Today you're gonna to be doing two activities. The first one is talking about volume with me, and then we're going to go over to my friend Jen, where you can talk about composting, recycling, and garbage. So let's talk about a few things that you'll need for this session today. For the part with me, you will need three containers. They can be anything you have at home that your family says you can use, maybe a vase, a bowl. I'm using three different containers from my kitchen. You want them to be different sizes if possible. The other thing you'll need is something to go inside the containers to try and fill them up. You could use crayons, you could use beads, maybe you have a lot of paper clips at home. I've decided to use marshmallows. You could use beans from your kitchen if you have dried beans or pasta. Just remember if you're using food to wash your hands first. The next thing you'll need is some water. I grabbed a jug of water. If you have a sink nearby, that's perfect too. And a measuring cup to measure the water. So what we're going to do is pause the video right now so you can grab your containers, your water, and your things to fill the containers. And we'll be right back. Great. So now that you're done collecting your materials, we're going to estimate. And remember that estimate means guessing. So just, we're going to guess. Which container of yours do you think can hold the most amount of stuff? If you've chosen containers that are really different in size, one's really big, one's really small, and one's in between, it might be easy. But if you've chosen three that are very similar in size, it might be a bit harder. For example, with my containers, this one to me, this little square one looks the smallest. But these two look very similar. I'm not really sure which one will hold more, but I'm going to guess the round one. Do you think I'm right? Remember, we're just guessing. So at this point, we're just making our best prediction we can, and then at the end, we'll see if we were correct or not. So the first thing that we're going to do is talk about volume. Volume is the amount of space that something takes up, or how much liquid something can hold. So let's see how much water fits inside of each of our containers. So why don't you arrange your containers from what you think is the smallest amount of water, and then the middle amount, and then the largest amount. And what we're going to do is measure. So take your measuring cup. If you just have a regular cup, that's okay to use too from your kitchen. And we're going to fill it with water. So here's one cup. I'll start with my smallest container. Can hold one cup of water, and my container is almost full already. So let's see. Okay, my first container can hold almost two cups of water. So I'll remember that number. If you'd like to, you can write it down so that you have so it's easier to remember. So just about two cups of water for my first one. Now make a guess. Based on that first one, how much water do you think your second one can hold? My second container looks maybe double the size of my first one. So I'm thinking maybe four cups. But again, it's just a guess. So let's count together. Might also be a good idea to have a towel nearby just in case some water spills. So there's one for me. Two. Three. And four. There's still room in my container, so my prediction was not quite enough. Let's see if five cups of water fit in this container. That's right, five cups fit in this container. So right now I have two cups, then five cups, and then how much do you think can fit in this one if five fit in this one? My guess would be six cups of water. Let's see, another strategy you could use is very carefully, you could take your five cups of water, whatever fits in your second one, and pour it into your third one to see if it holds more or less. 
Oh, my third container is full already. And I still have some left in my second container. That means that my third container has less volume than my second container. So my prediction was not correct, which is okay. Because in math, we just guess. We make predictions based on what we think. And it's okay if our prediction is proven wrong. So I'm going to rearrange my containers and say that this container held the least amount of liquid, this one held a medium amount of liquid, and this one holds the most liquid. So now that we know the volume of water that the containers can hold, we are going to take a minute to empty the water into the sink or wherever you need to empty your water, and then we'll come back and try the same thing with the marshmallows. Okay, so now I have emptied the water from my containers and I've also dried them a little bit with a towel so that my food doesn't get wet when I put it in. The next thing we're going to do is use the containers to measure something else, something solid instead of liquid. So I talked about using marshmallows and we talked that you could use anything in your home that will fit in the containers. If you've chosen something really big, so for example, if I had chosen apples for my fruit bowl, I might not fit very many in my container. So this one might only fit one apple. This one might only fit a couple of apples. So your numbers might be very different from the numbers that I'm getting. And that's fine. If you're using teeny tiny pieces of rice, your numbers might be quite high. So we will all get different numbers for this experiment. And it also depends on the size of your containers. So let's predict how many marshmallows do you think will fit in my small container? I'm going to guess maybe 10. So let's see, let's check how many fit in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So my prediction was a little bit low. I could fit about 16 in here. It doesn't have to be perfect. They don't have to line up perfectly, but I can fit about 16 in here. So if I can fit 16 marshmallows in here, how many marshmallows do you think can fit in this one? Let's check. One, two, three, four, five, six, and you can count by twos if you want. I'll count by three, so I'll put in three more, which is nine. Three more makes 12. Then we have 15, 18, 21, 24, and 27. I think I can squish them all in. So this one fit 27 marshmallows. Remember, if you need to, you can write down these numbers so that you remember. So, if this container fit more water than this one, do you think it will fit more marshmallows? Let's see how many marshmallows can fit in this container. This time, maybe I'll come by fives. So there's five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and I think I can squish them on the top here too. About 35 marshmallows. I could probably squish in a few more if I wanted over here. So I can see that the volume of this container is bigger than the volume of this container, which is bigger than the volume of this container. What did you find for your containers? Another experiment you could do is thinking about the mass that each container can hold. So which container would be heavier, do you think? The one with the most marshmallows? the one with the least marshmallows. What if it was apples? 
Although this container holds 27 marshmallows and can only hold two or three apples, do you think it would be heavier or lighter with the apples in it? What about water? If you have a kitchen scale or a weighing scale, you could weigh them. If not, you can hold them in your hands with the different materials inside to see which one is the heaviest and which one might be the lightest and how different materials have different mass. Thank you so much for doing these kitchen activities with me. I am so excited to hear if anybody tries this at home with their own materials and how many items can fit in each of your containers. Now we're going to go over to Jen. Jen has a really fun activity with sorting compost, garbage and recycling and I can't wait to see what happens over there. Thank you so much, Erin. That was super fun. I hope you had a great time with Erin. Now, I'm gonna take you over and we're gonna go on a little adventure in my kitchen. Welcome to my kitchen. Um, we'll be talking a little bit about recycling and composting. You can follow along with me as we learn more about recycling compost with your own bin. So maybe at home you already have your own recycling bin, your trash can, and um, a little bin for compost. If you don't have bins, it's never too late to make your own. So grab some markers, pieces of paper, and you can write recycling, trash, compost. And if you can find three containers, sort of large containers, we can make our own bins for this activity. So why do we recycle and compost in the first place? Wouldn't it be easier if we just tossed everything into one bin and we didn't have to sort it or anything? Well, it, it might be easier, but we actually want to keep as much out of the trash can as possible. That's because everything that goes into the trash can ends up in landfills. And the stuff that ends up in landfills well, they never decompose and they just kind of sit there forever and ever. So we'll end up with just giant mountains of garbage, essentially, um, that just sit there. With recycling and compost, recycling, recycling materials allows us to give these materials a new life. So if we're throwing you know, an old plastic bottle in here, that plastic can be melted down and created uh, and, and made into another bottle maybe, or the plastic can be used for something else. With compost, you definitely don't want compost um, materials to end up in landfill because these materials do break down, but they release a sort of greenhouse gas um, that sort of that contributes to global warming and we don't want that either. So our goal is to keep as much out of the trash as possible and as much into the recycling and compost bin. So how do we know what goes in which bin? We'll go through them one by one. So here I have my recycling bin and depending on where you live, most places in North America, um, they'll, it'll be a blue bin. It could be different in other places. So definitely do your research and, and check online. As with everything I'm doing here, by the way, um, it might be different where you live, so definitely do that research with an adult, go online, figure out which items go into which bin depending on where you live because it might be a little different, right? Anyway, blue bin is usually recycling and things that go in here are things like plastic, um, tin, what else, glass. So those sorts of materials belong in the recycling bin. Uh, a trash can, usually a wall of trash will usually have everything that doesn't belong in recycling or compost. So if it doesn't belong in the blue bin and it doesn't belong in compost, then we'll throw it in the trash can. And that's kind of like a last resort. Finally, um, compost bins are usually smaller. In most places, they're a green color. This is just my own little compost bin. I later take this out and I toss it into a bigger compost bin. So. In composting, uh, we are looking for organic materials. So things that come from the earth, essentially. So most food items, all food items will go in here. And yeah, we'll talk about a couple, we'll look at a couple examples uh, for composting, trash and recycling. So here is my first item. We'll walk through this together. 
I have a plastic bottle here. Uh, just based off what we just discussed, this bottle, because it's plastic, it would go into the recycling bin. All right, and um, another important thing is usually, uh, at least where I live, we like to take the cap off and recycle them separately. So plastic, the cap is also plastic, they belong in the recycling bin. The next thing I have is a ball of tin foil or aluminum foil. Where would this go? This one's a little trickier because I don't think I mentioned this material uh, earlier, but aluminum foil is another material that can be recycled. So again, aluminum foil, we can toss into the recycling bin. Okay, here is something for my breakfast earlier today. Um, a banana peel. Where do you think this banana peel would go? Would it go in recycling? Would it go in the trash can? Or would it go into compost? Think about it for a second. If you're thinking compost, you are correct. And how do we know that? Well, a banana is it's food and it's organic. It comes from the earth. Therefore, it can be decomposed. So, my banana peel, I will toss into my compost bin. Let's see if you can figure out where the next items go. We will start with an easy one. Over here, I have a glass bottle this time. Where would I place the glass bottle? In recycling, in the trash can, or in compost? Think about it, glass. Yes, if you said recycling, you're 100% correct. Glass is a recyclable material, so we will put that gently into the recycling bin. What about an old takeout container? Where would this go? It's made, I can tell you it's made of plastic, and sometimes if you look at containers, they will have a uh, indicator at the bottom telling you whether it's recyclable or not, so that's really helpful. So in this case, uh, we have a little bit of a giveaway here. There is that recycling symbol, which tells us that this is recyclable. Now, I do want to mention that I rinsed and I just quickly put this under the top and I rinsed out all of the leftover food and sauce out of the containers and, and that's and make sure we're doing that when we're recycling our materials. We're making sure that there's not like this food and gunk and sauce left in it, that it's pretty clean. You don't have to scrub it or wash it, but at least rinse all the, the food particles out. All right, so plastic container, recycling. Okay, another breakfast item. I've got eggshells. Where would eggshells go? Yes, it would go in compost because once again, a dead giveaway for compost is, you know, it, is it a food item? And in this case, yes, I've eaten the inside of the eggs and now the shells are a great item to go into the compost bin. All right, I've got a couple of rubber bands that are just sitting around and creating clutter in my kitchen and I want to toss them out. Uh, where would these go? This one's a little tricky because I don't think I've mentioned this material either earlier. So take a guess, where would, where would we toss rubber bands? So rubber bands are not recyclable and they're, they, they, they don't go in the compost because they're not an organic material. So rubber bands um, would actually go in the trash can. So notice that this is our first example of an item going to the trash can. Okay, let's see if you can figure this one out. So here I have a, <laughs> a used napkin from dinner and it's got a little bit of like sauce on it and where would this, where would I toss this? So once again, make sure you double check where you live, uh, what the requirements are for each of these bins. But where I live, um, paper products such as napkins, tissues, if they have been soiled with food, so they have sauce on it or other food particles, um, they can actually go into the 
composting because they're made out of paper, which is also an organic material. Um, I believe if it's clean paper, it can go in the recycling, but if there's food on it already, it belongs in the compost bin. What about this here? This might be really familiar, familiar to you. Maybe you take Ziploc bags to school and you have snacks in them. So in the case of these little plastic bags, where do you think these would go? And you might have heard the keyword plastic. So yes, even though this is not a bottle or a container um, and it's a bag, because it's made out of plastic, remember we can reuse the plastic and make new materials with it, uh, the plastic bag would go into recycling as well. Here's another one that we sort of talked about, but not really. So cardboard, where would cardboard go? Recycling, trash, compost, Yes, I, cardboard is one of the more commonly seen items in the recycling bin you might see at school as well. So yes, cardboard would fall under recycling. Now, your recycling bin might be larger than mine, but mine is cool. What about leaves? My puppy actually brought these leaves in from outside when he went out to potty. So I don't want these lying around the house. So where would leaves belong? So think about where leaves come from. They come from the earth and they are organic materials. And although we may not eat leaves, I know I mentioned food items earlier, um, but they do come from trees. So leaves would go into the compost bin. Okay, one last one. It's a little trickier. Here, <laughs> I have leftover salsa from my dinner. So you can see I've got a green one and a red one. What would I do with these? And I want you to think about it because there, there is still food, there's still salsa inside the containers. So based off of what we've talked about prior to this, what do you think I should do with these containers? Well, you might be thinking it might need to go in two different places because I've got food inside of it, but the outside is made out of plastic. And that's correct. The inside, I'm gonna open it, we've got food items like the salsa here. And so the salsa would go into the compost bin. So I'm gonna dump that out in here. And same thing with this one here. This one's a little runnier, so I think this can actually go down like the little incinerator thing, but I can also dump it in here. Awesome. So now we can toss these into the recycling bin, right? If you're telling me, no, stop, you need to rinse these out, you are correct. Um, you, do you remember what I said earlier that when we recycle, we do want to get all the food and all the sauce out of it so it's nice and clean to be recycled. So I'm just gonna come over to my sink here and I'm gonna quickly, look, this, this takes no time. I'm just gonna quickly rinse the containers out and they're nice and clean. I can place my, uh, my plastic into the bin. Do the same thing here and into the recycling bin. And that's it. Nice, did you get that last one? That one was a bit of a trick question. There were a couple steps involved and we sort of have to take it apart and sort them into their uh, different bins. You may have noticed that not a lot of items went into the trash can. And that's because a lot of, most items that we use can actually either be recycled and repurposed or it can be composted. So. Definitely take a look at what you use around at home. And remember our goal is to limit what goes into the trash can and we'll try and recycle and compost as much as possible. Now, besides recycling and composting, can you think of some other ways we can help the earth and the environment by reducing waste and the amount of materials that we use? You may have remembered that I recycled a plastic bottle here. Remember that? We could eliminate 
plastic bottles by using reusable bottles. So I don't have mine here, I think it's being washed, but I have a water bottle that I carry around with me every day. And that just, that instead of grabbing a plastic bottle, like a water bottle every single time, you can fill your reusable water bottle up and take that with you. And that would reduce the amount of plastic that we use. Um, another great way are reusable shopping bags. So when you go to the grocery store um, or even just shopping, either if, you, if it's not a lot of stuff, you can either decline that bag or you can bring your own reusable bag that you can use over and over again. And that way we reduce the amount of plastic, paper bags, and whatever other kinds of bags um, that we normally see in grocery stores. Anyway, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for joining me in my kitchen on this little recycling compost composting adventure. And we will see you next time, maybe in another session. Bye, Prodigy Campers.